Hello viewers, this is Paladin of Odin, and this is some more Magic the Gathering Online. This is another episode of the Standard Commentary Series, and it looks like we've got White Weenie vs. Sultai Emerge. Now, before this game gets uh, rolling too fast, I'd like to update you guys about me. Um, I recently was offered a job. Uh, if you guys didn't know, I am currently unemployed. Uh, I haven't started the job yet. But this job is going to be a 40 hours a week job, uh, working uh, four 10-hour shifts. Now, I don't know what days I'm going to be working, so I don't know how it's going to affect my uh, content schedule. But most likely, I'm going to have to cut down the amount of videos that I put out. Uh, you know, uh, four days at 10-hour shifts, I'm probably going to be away from home for 12 or 13 hours at a time, you know, I'm going to be tired on those days, so I'm most likely not going to be able to get to work and make videos on those four days. I will have three days off, so I will put out content. I guarantee I will put out content. It's just I'm not going to be able, most likely not going to be able to do two videos every other day like I have been doing. But to be fair, I was probably going to cut down to this uh, new schedule anyway because I feel like I'm flooding you guys with content and you know I've been trying to figure out this balance of what content to make you guys happy um, unfortunately I'm going to have to switch to a new uh, schedule and a new amount of content regardless but uh, most likely it's going to be two videos a week and probably released on either Saturday or Sunday. But like I said, I guarantee that I will still put out content. So back to the game. Uh, White Weenie now has always watching, so all of his creatures have vigilance, so he can attack all in here. He has two anointer of champions, which because vigilance, they have vigilance, he can activate these uh, abilities after combat or after he's uh, declared blockers. So the flyers block the big guys, and the anointers buff themselves, so that'll still be six damage getting through. Now Sultai has quite a few things in his graveyard. Let's see, creature, let's see, two death misraptors, grapple with the past, haunted dead, swamp, three death misraptors, vessel of nascency, so one, two, three... Four. He's got four types in his graveyard right now. Throws down a morph. Now, I'm not exactly a fan of Death Mist Raptor in the Emerge deck, mainly because, you know, granted he is a 3-3 three, three Death Touch, 4-3. You know, that is not bad. The only problem is, is that his recursion ability is most likely never going to activate, unlike things like Prized Amalgam. Ooh, Declaration in Stone on the Morph. So he's responding. Den Protector. Okay. So in this particular instance, he had an opportunity. So he will get one card back with Den Protector and three Death Mist Raptors. But most of the time, this isn't going to happen. But then again, most of the Sultai decks that I've seen don't run Death Mist Raptor or Den Protector. You know, it's an older combo now in Standard, but it's still an effective one, as you can see. You know, you pay three to put this down, you pay two to flip it, you bring back a card to your hand, you get all your Death Mist Raptors back, in this case, three of them, which is ridiculous. So, that was in, you know, paying five mana for that, that is a good trade. You know, five mana to get a card graveyard, get three 3-3 three, three Death Touch creatures and a clue token, thanks to your opponent, and Thalia's Lieutenant. Now, the Death Touchers are going to make this an interesting combat. It's just, uh, what is he going to attack with? I mean, he can attack with the Knight of the White Orchid for free. Thanks to the first strike, he will eat a Death Mist Raptor if he gets blocked, He's keeping the Anointer of Champions back so he can make him a 6-6, which will eat two Death Mist Raptors before combat damage even touches him. 
But Deathmist Raptor to the Incited Rabble, that's a good choice. They will trade Deathmist Raptor to the Knight of the White Orchid. Honestly, I would have just thrown the prized amalgam in front of it since you're going to get that back sooner than the Deathmist Raptor, and it's kind of a waste of a Death Toucher. But it did keep him from taking damage there. And White Weenie is down to two cards. So, Sultai does have an advantage here. And he could very easily play another Haunted Dead from his graveyard. Or, since he has one in play, four off of an Emerge cost. Unfortunately, White Weenie's currently on 20, so something like an Elder Deep Fiend, while it would tap down all of his opponent's creatures and provide him with an attack, you know, ultimately all he would deal with would be 8 damage, and then he would only have one blocker versus quite the uh, power on the other side, you know? It, it may not seem like it, but 2 three, 3 Vigilance that can give plus 1 to an attacking creature. A 4-4 four, four Vigilance first strike is ridiculously powerful. And then a 2-2 two, two Vigilance at the moment, but uh, it will get bigger. All he has to do is just keep playing humans. And as far as I know, every creature that White Weenie is running is a human. So basically, that's all White Weenie does, really, is play creatures. You know, you'll see an occasional thing like a buff, like Always Watching, or a creature kill card like Declaration in Stone to try and clear the way. But the majority of the cards in his deck are creatures. Evolutionary Leap. Now, I will be honest, it's not a bad card to run, given you have the mana open to use it, since, you know, your creatures are going to die. It's just a fact of life. And why not get a benefit out of it while you can? But at the same time, I've never seen a game with Evolutionary Leap in play where the leap gets you the game back, you know, if you're losing. I've never seen Evolutionary Leap gain you the advantage back to your side, or win you a game you know it's always been just a you know big deal you know i sacrifice the creature and then get another one you know it's never really a big deal all right attacking all out minus the thalia's lieutenant blocking all out throwing the death mist raptor in front of anointer of champions so that it will kill it Okay, that one buffs the other one so that it'll live through the prized amalgam. And then there's no real reason to tap this one since it doesn't matter which creature he would buff in that situation. Alright, another Anointer of Champions. And like I said, you know, with them having Vigilance, that, that card instantly becomes very, very powerful. Because you can attack in and then buff a creature. And he didn't activate Evolutionary Leap when he had the chance. I'm surprised. I thought that that's, that was the whole reason of playing the Evolutionary Leap at that point. And he still would have had enough mana to pop the clue token. Brings back the Haunted Dead. Or that. He would have brought back the Haunted Dead anyway. I mean, he could have sacrificed the creature he blocked the knight with to the Evolutionary Leap and gotten a benefit out of it since it was going to die anyway and do nothing. And look, he has the mana left open. He could have done that very, very easily. All right, Expedition Envoy followed by Dragon Hunter, so now he's got another couple of 3-2s. Thalia's Lieutenant is now up to a 5-5. Five five. But White Weenie is top-decking. So if Emerge can play something like Languish, he will most likely win this game by default. But most of the time, 
I, I don't see them run languish mainly because the creatures they run are small and they really kind of need them to slow down their opponents and also to cut down the emerge costs. So sacrificing Haunted Dead to the Evolutionary Leap finds him a Den Protector. Which in this situation is very good because he still has the mana so that he can play it for Morph and then flip it for two and get back all those Death Mist Raptors. And the thing about that is the only creature that they can't kill is the Knight of the White Orchid. And then on top of that, well, if he had tapped his mana differently, he would have had the mana left open so that he could sacrifice a creature to Evolutionary Leap in combat. But who knows, maybe he has another trick up his sleeve. All right, goes straight into the attack phase, declaring attack all out. And Sultai is tapping mana. Tapped the wrong mana to flip the Den Protector. Decimator of Provinces is in his graveyard now. That's a little bit unfortunate because uh, you only get the benefit from him when you cast him. But that's not important right now. What's important is he is getting all these Death Mist Raptors back. Den Protector is choosing Vessel of Nascency. Kind of an odd choice in this situation. You could have picked anything in your graveyard, including this bonehead. But throwing out the Death Touch creatures in front of the creatures that he can kill. And honestly, I would uh, put the Den Protector and the Prized Amalgam in front of these other ones, because you really need to s slow down this damage train. Alright, so he's blocking all out. There are going to be trades, and unfortunately for White Weenie, he is going to end up losing quite a bit here. He lost everything except an Expedition Envoy and the Knight of the White Orchid while Sultai got to keep a Death Mist Raptor. Uh, that was a very good trade for Sultai. And then the card in hand was another Expedition Envoy. Grapple with the past. Ooh, Voldarn Pariah, prized amalgam. Grabs a Den Protector. Which he can play, and then he can unmorph again. I have to say... You know, given that this isn't the norm for Sultai, um, the morph combo here is very, very strong. Though, honestly, I think it's a little bit slow compared to the other deck lists that I've seen. Given that you have to throw this down for three, and then it has to live long enough so that you have two mana open so that you can morph him. Or unmorph him, excuse me. Or you have to wait until you have five mana so that you can morph him and then have enough mana already open. And, you know, it's a little bit more clunky than the uh, usual setup of just uh, running a bunch of prized amalgams and haunted dead and the Eldrazi creatures. And But in this particular matchup, this is very good. This is the reason why he's still alive. And one morphed Den Protector just keeps bringing back the pain. Prized Amalgams, Death Mist Raptors, um, whatever card he wants. In this case, Decimator of Provinces, which is a 9-drop with a merge. 
three, six, seven, eight. He's one mana short of emerging or hard casting Decimator of Provinces. Ooh, Voldaren Pariah. And he's getting back four prized amalgams here, which he can immediately sacrifice to the Pariah to transform it and force White Weenie to sacrifice three creatures, which almost guarantees the win at this stage, because Sultai has Decimator of Provinces in his hand. Oh, it was uh, just a double stack of the effects. Sorry. But still, he can very easily transform Voldaren's Pariah here. Another Knight of the White Orchid. Throbin Inspector got him a clue token, which he sacrificed. A transformed Pariah here would just kill off the Inspector and the two Envoys, but uh, White Weenie concedes. He knew what was in his opponent's hand, and he knew it was going to come down next turn. You know, plus two, plus two, and trampled all those creatures, plus the Decimator as a 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, it would be a 9-9. Nine, nine. He was not going to survive that next attack. But that was well done by the Sultai player. And like I said, you know, not the norm for the Sultai deck, but in that particular matchup, that was the thing that kept him in that game. So, uh, I've babbled on for far too long. That was White Weenie versus Sultai Emerge. And if you liked what you saw, hit that like and subscribe button for me, and I will see you in the next